So moving on to the content, first is crossover events. Um, so to review, as you probably remember during meiosis, the chromosomes of both parents undergo a process called crossover events, in which gametes, uh, which creates gametes that are distinct from the gametes of either parent. And this process is very important for genetic diverse, diversity and subsequently survival, okay? So, um, and here, here's a very good visual example. So this is um, what your two chromosomes look like, the pink ones from your mom, blue ones from your dad, let's say. Um, and you can see there's the combination genes A and genes B, which are on the chromosome, they're just two random genes. Um, so from your mother, you have uh, dominant A, lowercase b, and from your father, you have lowercase b, uh, uppercase, uh, sorry, lowercase a, uppercase b, right? And that is um, in your homozygous for both of those because um, you can see both arms are the same. Uh, but you go undergo this process called crossover in which they kind of literally cross over and they recombine. And now um, the four gametes that you could possibly get are actually look like this. If you notice, this is exactly the same as your father's. This one's exactly the same as your mother's, but you also have these two, which are not the same as either your father's or your mother's chromosome. They're actually fusions of the two together, right? And you can see that even in the genes. So um, uppercase A and lowercase B are what your mother has. And in this one, you have uppercase, lowercase, but in this one, you have uppercase, uppercase, and in this one, you have lowercase, lowercase. Right, so you take part of the gene from both parents, right? And this is just a very, very simplistic example because you only have two genes, but imagine if you had hundreds or thousands of genes on a chromosome and you were recombining with all of them um, between each other, right? You would get a lot more genetic diversity and there would be a lot more mixture and random stuff that could uh, occur, right? And that's what gives us so much diversity. That's why um, if you, for example, if we didn't have this recombination, we only had these two options, pretty much most of your stuff would look like either your father or your mother. So if your parents had like 10 children, five of them would basically look exactly the same and it would essentially be exactly the same because there's just not much room for mixing, right? There's not that much room for diversity, which is obviously not very good, right? For overall survival and adaptability, okay? And again, these are, remember, these are the four possible gametes that you could have. So for example, um, as a reminder, reminder, gametes are like sperm or eggs, depending on gender. Um, so for, uh, for example, you could have this one as the gamete. Um, if you're a female, this could be the egg that goes into fertilization. And in that case, your child will carry on fully your mother's DNA, right? Because this will look exactly like your mother's egg that made you so when you have your child um this egg will go into fertilization and uh you'll pass on the same genes to your child as your mother passed on to you if in this case for example right but and in this case right you would pass on the same genes that your father passed along to you to your child if this gamete is chosen for fertilization right but if one of these is chosen it, it's different so you could pass on the same exact copies that your mother or your father passed on exactly as how they passed it on to you. But um, with recombination, there's now a chance that you won't, right? And again, this chance is actually, um, for most cases, when you're dealing with only two genes is actually um, 50%. And we'll actually cover the percentage a little bit later, but like two out of the four options now are recombinants rather than, um, right? So 50%, but we'll cover that in a little bit. Okay, uh, shown if there was no crossover, we could only adopt the allele combinations that our parents have, which we just talked about, how uh, this would be taking the majority of our traits from one parent or the other, right? So if you took a whole chromosome from your mother, each chromosome, if that chromosome had like 100 genes on it or something like that, all 100 would just be exactly what your mother's genes are, right? Um, but due to this combination, we can create many, many different combinations of alleles for each gene, thus resulting in more of a blend between the two parents. Um, let's talk very briefly about how this works. We actually did uh, talk about it before when we talked about DNA repair, uh, the DNA repair pathways, uh, I think about two or three weeks ago. Um, and in that lecture, we talked about 
how you can have a double stranded break and double stranded break is uh, created by the um, by the actual DSPR double stranded break repair pathway. Um, and there's also this pathway, the SDSA pathway. Um, this is also um, viable for uh, this type of repair. Um, again, they're, if you can see here, they're fairly similar. And these are the two options that can occur um, when you are undergoing crossover events. Um, main difference is this one is holiday junction, um, whereas this one just is just ligation. This one also only results in non-crossover, whereas this one can occur, can result in crossover or non-crossover, right? As you can see here, um, crossover is a little bit different than non-crossover, right? Okay. And the main difference, again, I want to point out is that all four strands are different, if you can see. So it's blue, red, blue, red, red, blue, red, blue, whereas this one's just fully red, red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. So this one has one non-crossover. Um, so it's not considered fully crossover. Um, so it's considered non-crossover. And this one is just, you get red and then you get a little bit of a mixture of red, of red and blue here and then just fully blue here. So this is also considered non-crossover. And uh, th this is more, I think this is more a little bit um, kind of what it's what you learned before with the, the repair pathway, um, the more simplistic repair pathway for DNA repair, whereas this is more for um, whereas this is more for the um, the meiosis aspect of it. Okay. But again, you don't really have to know the specifics. And if you do want to know the specifics, I encourage you to kind of do a little more research on your own. But this is a very, very, very complicated process that has multiple steps, especially uh, this one on the left here. Um, it has very many steps. So I would recommend if you are interested, you're not required to really for the MCAT to know them in detail. But if you're interested, feel free to look into that more. Um, one thing that the MCAT may test you on a little bit more is actually recombinant frequency. So each gene combination has a different frequency of recombination. For example, if an organism has genes A, B, and C on the one chromosome, uh, the recombination frequency between genes A and B, A and C, and B and C may all be different from each other. The farther away they are, the more likely crossover events will occur. At a certain far enough distance, the number of crossover and non-crossover offspring is equal, which will we mentioned before, where it's 50%, meaning the re rate of recombination is 50%, which is the max. You can't have more than 50% um, rate of recombination. As the genes get closer together, like physically closer together on the chromosome, the number of crossover events decreases and you actually have lower um, recombinants than you do um, non-crossovers, right? So you'll have, uh, as they're closer together, you'll have more, more of just your mother's or just your father's rather than combination between those two genes at least, right? And again, um, if I want to draw it, for example, there's A here, B here, so A, B, and then uh, here is A, little a, little b. Right, you can have a crossover like this, right? And this will create once the, once this resolves, it'll create something. Um, actually, I can do it in different colors to make it clearer. Sorry, one second. Blue, and so now when you have this kind of this green crossover right here and this uh, let's say like brown crossover right here, what you end up getting is actually looks like this. Actually, I'll just make this red because it should be red and this one should be this blue color, right? So it'll look like this. or something like this, right? And then you'll have, 
A. Oh, and then after that, all you have to do is just follow the lines, right? Um, so you start off here, you take the A gene, and you follow this line, follow this line, follow this line. Then you have this B gene. You have to basically take every uh, pathway, right? It's kind of like a train track. You have to take every uh, pathway that you get, right? You can't continue on this way straight forward. You have to take this one. And then you get A and then little b. And this one, if you start on this one, you have red, red, red. Take this little a, take this pathway up here, and then you take this b, right? And you have something like this. So this is how like a crossover event would occur, in, right? Cross over is a crossing, and you can have actually uh, multiple crossover events, which we'll I'll cover in, on the next slide. Um, but this is like the general idea, just to help you kind of like see the big picture, and this is kind of what was summarized in all of this. But yeah, all right. And uh, this is again recombinant frequency max is fifty percent. As you get closer together, um, it becomes less than fifty percent. Next, we want to talk about gene mapping. So, because we can do, we know this knowledge of the farther away it is, the higher the percent of recombination, the closer the less. We can actually use this to map where the genes are experimentally. So, if we take, for example, fruit flies, which reproduce a lot and produce a lot of offspring, um, we can see how many of them are recombinants, like experimentally, and you can using this equation. Right to find experimentally what the recombinant frequency is, and this is how you always find the recombinant frequency is through experimentation. Um, so you take however many recombinant prodigy are there. So how many kids do you have that are mixtures of like instead of this and this little a little b? How many are like this or like this? Right. So you take how many of these are and then divide by the total number of kids that the fruit fly had and multiply that 100% to get a percentage, that's what your recombinant frequency is, right? And you can experimentally determine that again with fruit flies or some other um, organism that reproduces a lot. And then we can basically map that out. Um, we have these recombination frequencies. So for example, the crossover between the, uh, sorry, black. The crossover between these genes right, right here is this percentage. We know that. Now, uh, based on that, we can actually determine where these genes are located physically on the chromosome, and we can actually make a chromosome map. If we do this for a thousand genes, right, that are on, we know are on chromosome like four. If we do this for all the genes that are on chromosome four, theoretically, we can pretty much get an exact mapping of where each gene is located on the chromosome, like physically, and we can get a perfect order if we do this right through experimentation. Um, how do we do this? So looking at the chart, we can see the gene BG and gene B right here have the highest frequency of recombination. Therefore, they are also the furthest apart from each other. These two genes are the furthest apart. Um, meanwhile, BG and CN are, is lower. And then CN and B, the distance between them is also lower. So and because of that, VG and B must be the furthest apart and CN must be between them. So we can actually create a map. So let's go three genes. Um, we know the furthest apart are VG and B, and we know that CN must be between them, right? So this would be the order on the chromosome of these genes. And then imagine this goes dot, 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 dot. Chromosome extends further, right? More genes. This is just an example. Um, now let's talk about multiple crossover events, right? Um, just to quickly cover this. So again, three genes on each one. Try and go as fast as I can. VG, uh, CN, and B. Uh, for this one, we'll just do big B, uh, big CN, and uh, big VG. Just to make it simple, right? Um, a crossover can occur like this, and that's it. A crossover can occur like that, and then like this. So it's two crossovers, and a crossover can um, also occur, um, like for example, like this, right? And this is kind of what we were talking about. Uh, before. 
So if a crossover occurs like this, again, follow the pathing path and I'll do it in red and blue. Follow the path, start here. Small VG, small CN, follow this path, big B. So there is now only a crossover between these two genes, CN and B. No crossover between these genes, right? Okay, but this also means that there is a crossover between VG and B, right? Because you're having crossover between VG and B. Um, at the same time, uh, you have like this, blue again, follow, follow, right? CN and B have a crossover, VG and B also have a crossover, right? Because you're taking this VG and this B, therefore crossover. Um, alternatively, um, we can have, um, I mentioned this crossover where there's two crossover events. Again, draw it, start on the left, VG, take this path down, take this path up, boom. That. In this sense, you only have a crossover between VG and CN and between CN and B. You don't have crossover between VG and B because you're using the same one, this VG, this B, right? Same signs. And again, if you were to do the blue on the other one, it would be the same thing. I see this a little bit more rare because you have to have two crossover events, but this is how that one would work. And if we were to do um, the last combination, like there can be many more, but um, like this, you could have that and then blue. And again, in this one, you only have crossover between VG and CN and VG and B, right? Okay, that makes sense. So in both cases, whether you have an X here or an X here, you have a crossover between VG and B, but you only have a crossover between like say VG and CN in this situation, or you only have a crossover between CN and B if you have this X right here, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. 